Genesis. Uh, interestingly enough, you can actually root through Exodus and find the journey of Moses looking at a burning bush going through leading the nation of Israel out of Egypt. You can see these steps. So, I mean, there's a biblical truth, there's a scientific truth, and that, that journey of behavioral change really is what an executive needs to understand, a business owner needs to understand, so that they can guide, coach, lead marketing. Um, and, and it's it's brilliant. We all go through the same change, whether it's changing a behavior or changing, like you, something led you, Jim, to change your lifestyle from a certain place uh, in the country to another place in the country. And it's not that either place was right or wrong. It was just for whatever the needs were that your family had, that you had, you went through a change. And I could tell you without even knowing you what that journey looked like mm -hmm. and the decisions. I can't tell you the specifics, but I can tell you what you were doing uh, at the time. Uh, the other thing the science does, and this is a huge aha for marketers and business owners, is if you think about marketing as creating awareness, that's like you've got nine gears in your off-road racing car and you're staying in first gear, right? And you can't figure out why the car doesn't work. No, it's not the car. <laughs> There's eight other gears you're not using. Shift, you know? shift, buddy, shift. Yeah, shift. Once in a while, shift. Actually, that's uh, the the would be a good name for a book if I was to write a book called Shift. That was a nice layup. I yeah, um, and that was not prompted, but yeah, the idea of shift is is, uh, and that's a book you can find on Amazon. I'm not touting books. There is a. Um, breakdown of that but uh, of this process but there's nine gears in this journey that you can use that range from awareness that's a tiny part of marketing but all the way th uh, through the journey before you change there's there's tools that are only effective for sales to use when mm -hmm. you close a deal mm -hmm. and then there's things that are effective for marketing to do when sales shouldn't be so there's just this incredible journey that a framework can offer you and and that a guide can give you so I'd say actually read the book Changing for Good if you want to figure it out for yourself um, or call me. That's what I do, too. Yeah. Talk to me about patience. You know, um, oftentimes, whether you're a business owner, mm. entrepreneur, or you're, you're building a business plan, startup, or maybe you're an executive in a company and, and the demand is there to market the brand and build sales, people oftentimes misconstrue marketing as a light switch that will instantly pour through the door a mass amount of sales and yeah. they don't realize the the patience that's required to build and set a foundation can you talk about that a little bit yeah sure uh, if, if we were watching a, a game and uh, one of the many website company ads came up uh, i would roll my eyes at you and and even companies like, well, I mean, you, we've all seen the ad where the business, they start the business and they're all sitting around staring at each other and the website starts and all the orders pour in and UPS trucks are backing up and, and it's, you know, that, that all takes place in a period of about five seconds on mm. TV, right? Mm -hmm. And the website companies are convincing you that all you have to do is, is get online. Um, I mean, Jim, you, you've got a substantial podcast because you've got a, a great content, good subjects and... You know, there's, but do people realize there's two and a half million podcasts? Right. Do people know that of those two and a half million, only about 400,000 have posted anything in the last three to four months? Do people know that you are in the, what, top 5%, 2% of all podcasts in the world? Like It takes work, and you didn't do that at, in the length of a 15, 30-second TV spot, right? That's right. How long did it take you? Well, to get to this spot. Three, three years. And what's interesting, the way that you presented that, when I launched my first show, I was thrilled that 10 people downloaded it and listened. You know, and a month went by. I was like, wow, well, we had 10 people listen. You know, and, and then the next month, maybe it was a couple more, and the next show is a couple more. We have 100 a day now listening. And and you're Incredible. still looking for the next one. But it, it, it took a lot of patience to get through that. Wow, only 10 people listened. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, so the easy rule of thumb is, uh, for an ex executive insider tip, patience, how patient should you be? Well, one, the average length of a chief marketing officer in a business today is under two years. Mm. And I would say that any entity, any executive on the executive team probably doesn't get typically fired in a year and a half. If your CFO came in and you don't have the numbers you like, you don't fire them in 18 months. 
you might fire them at some point, right? But you don't fire them. If you're the guy running the plant typically lasts longer than 18 months. But for some reason, because of this patient's problem, we all fire the marketing person. So yeah. the first rule of thumb is if you could turn a switch when you walked in on day one of work, you sit down at your new desk, you get done with HR onboarding, and you flip the switch and everything is working perfectly, the length of your sales cycle is the minimum amount of time that you could see change. So if I've got a two year sales cycle on what I sell in a big B2B CapEx, then two years is the minimum. If they could start doing everything right on day one, maybe consumers shorter than that, maybe a consumer buy cycle to get the Liberty cattle ball cap you know, that you've got on your head, you know, maybe you get that done faster. Maybe how long does it take uh, to buy to say yes? That consumer cycle could be, you, you probably already sold 10 today, right? So that's a short cycle. So you can have those expectations to be faster in a consumer world. But my expertise is B2B world. So start with uh, the length of your sales cycle and then ask if any other employee on your, on your team can be 100% effective day one. So established, of course, he can't be effective on day one. Give me a break. Right. So, <laughs> just happy to be like, there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you just, you got through HR. You still don't understand how to log in and ask for a holiday or a sick day, right? Um, yeah, so if you think it takes a year for a for your ex member of your executive team to get up to speed to really understand, then add that year to the length of the sales cycle. That's your minimum. So let's say it takes a year and you got an 18-month sales cycle. So you're talking about, it's going to take you three years to see this, whether this is something to continue or not. Mm -hmm. Are there leading indicators? Absolutely. Can you measure early stage sales cycle work faster? Absolutely. Um, but until you really have an ROI, no. In fact, here's a great example, Jim. One of our uh, favorite clients ever, um, we went in, they had 40,000 visitors to their website a month. And the first thing we did was cut that down to 5,000 visitors because hmm. they were wasting money and time. Mm -hmm. So our first metric that normally people would go, oh, we went from five to 40. Our biggest success metric in the beginning was going from 40 to five um, and with different users. So like every situation is so different. You're gonna have to, I mean, ask, ask your expert how long it's gonna take. Um, and this is also a failure of ad agencies. Ad agencies are great at saying, oh, we can create X awareness in six months. Yeah, it's true. We're doing work for a group out of DC. We, we put a message for this group in front of 24 million Americans in a period of 16 months, 13 months, something like that, um, and had active engagement of about 24,000 of those people. And that was pretty fast, right? But that was, those are both early stage. The, the behavior changes haven't happened yet. So mm -hmm. there's, there's minimum steps. I'm telling you how to build a watch. Length of your sales cycle, how long does it take your other employees to start contributing? There's your minimum patience level. Yeah, you know, um, my mind was kind of wandering there for a minute about the amount of people that you reach and touch versus the amount that actually make a difference within that mm -hmm. touch. And I think that uh, marketing was really exposed in the social media world right now. You hire a marketing company because you want to boost up your followers of your business. Next thing you, you know, you got 100,000 followers, but you got zero engagements. It's one thing to bring a whole bunch of people into the room, but how many of yeah. those people are actually buyers and consumers that will make a difference in your, in your business? And I think that that goes back to finding a good coach or consultant or leadership that understands, hey, I'd rather have five good people than yeah. 500 that could care less about my product. So here's how I've, I've guided our team to approach and how we, when we talk to our clients, what we do, we start with some, we call it selling backward. Mm -hmm. So what's selling backward mean? Another great question, Jim. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you just keep asking these zingers. Just rolling right off. <laughs> yeah. So selling backward means, uh, it, it, you know, actually it really fits into your patient's answer. Selling backward means you identify the prospects who already know you, you already know, you've had some engagement with, and let's focus on that as a subset first, because to take somebody through, let's go through that sales cycle example we just went through. If it takes 18 months to get somebody from pre-contemplating 
uh, totally unaware of who you are, what you do, or why you matter, why would we start with that group instead of starting with the group who understands the space, understands you, maybe your technology, maybe your sales force, and begin to build that relationship or take that relationship that's built and help those people move forward if they need the help, if they, if it's a good fit, if it's not, let's parse that database and let's get rid of those people. Um, so we have two processes we use. One's called Wake the Dead. A lot of people have these huge databases, and um, we took one not too long ago that had twenty three thousand names in it, um, but the sales force, the sales team, acknowledged that they didn't know most of them. So. Mm -hmm. We uh, eliminated that um, probably 15,000 names out of that list and in the process generated $280,000 of lifetime value out of um, people who were interested and in, were good names in there. So the other approach to Wake the Dead, which is a process of elimination and pulling it out, is to grow that database. But that takes more time, right? So start with selling backward. Work with your sales force in pursuit of marketing and sales alignment. It's a better place to start anyway, because mm -hmm. if sales doesn't trust you and you're some marketing schmuck that comes in and that's me, that's my role, marketing schmuck. So I don't want to be the marketing schmuck. I want to come in and visit with the SVP of sales. I want to meet and I want to go ride. You know, I was actually last time I was in Colorado, I rode with the sales guy. Uh, I learned more riding in a sales guy than probably in two or three hours or days of strategy sessions where we all put on our executive hats and, and think wonky. Um, you know, just go ride with the guy. You know, it's incredible the problems you discover. Yeah, and, and the um, honesty. But, yeah, the honesty. And he and he, that that guy, that salesman, told me some of the problems that they were facing, and I was able to come back to the executive team and make really incredible insights, right? Here's, here's what's going on. It's not that we need this or that or the other, more money, but let's fix that selling backwards. Let's fix the problems closest to the cash, closest to the deal, the latest stage customers, and then work backward to the people who have never heard of us. They don't understand how or why we're relevant. Uh, and selling backward is an incredibly, incredibly effective technique. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, I realized our time flew by. We had some good stories there. Some last minute advice maybe for our, our listeners and, and you know, what they could be looking mm -hmm. for in a marketing uh, leadership or support mechanism. I knew you had a book out a few years ago. Um, yeah, I was honored to be published by a rock bench out of Nashville. Uh, I think there's two things um, that would be helpful out of that book. I, I'm, officially not making a living on that book. Uh, I wrote it. In <laughs> fact, Jim offered to pay for these. If you just send me a note at uh, Sean at Fitzmartin.com, then I'll send him the bill and send you the book. So Sean at Fitzmartin.com and uh, glad to send you some. Um, I, my publisher is a little embarrassed how many are sitting in the room behind me. But, <laughs> and I'm a little embarrassed by it too, actually. So, But there, there's two chapters in there that are effective, that are important. One is this introduction of a framework and, and how do you, how, what's the centricity thing look like? How do you use behavioral science? How do you apply Exodus four, five, six, and seven to your business, to your sales processes? And as a leader, if you understand the process, then understanding the tactics are much less important so understand the process, not the tactics. Um, and then you can, when someone presents a tactic to you, then you can ask, well, how's this fit in the process? Mm -hmm. right? That's all you have to know. How does this fit in the process? I don't have to understand any tactic. I'm not worried about any client asking me any question about any new sh shiny object, any squirrel, because they happen all the time. You know, I'm an old man, right? I've seen a lot of shiny objects. And my answer, I'm always prepared because I just want to know how it fits in the sales cycle. And most people don't know. And then we can explore it together. That buys me a little time to explore it together. And the second thing is raise your expectations of marketing, man. Come on. So there's a chapter in there of how to hire somebody to lead marketing, not do marketing. Quit hiring your nephew or your niece out of college, putting them in a marketing role, or quit hiring a tactical person, putting them in a marketing role, and wondering why marketing doesn't work. You don't hire a kid right out of college to run your accounting and then get frustrated with your accountant, right? You just don't do it. So why do you do it in marketing? Stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> you can do better. Come on. You know, I think uh, I could cut this show down to one minute if you just said the last two things, because those are so critically important. 
and uh, and I did laugh out 